Welcome back to Excel Exposure. Today's video lesson should be the first one with that intro, so I hope you enjoyed it. Today I'll be going over the math and statistical functions that I've deemed experience level one, which I think are the most beginner or at least the most important functions for you to learn coming into it in terms of the math and statistical categories. I've got some example data set up here, some product sales for a fake company and as well as some play data over here some of it pretty interesting with some links to Wikipedia more Wolfram Alpha but I will be using this fake data with the functions down below some of these functions I'll run through rather quickly because they're relatively easy to explain others will take a bit more time um, the minimum function min will just give you the smallest value in any range so here it'll give us the smallest amount of units sold which is 12 units the max formula will do the exact opposite which will give you the largest number in any range so the max number of units sold out of the cells given so right there you can easy, quickly and easily figure out what was the lowest amount of units sold and what was the highest average is also pretty self-explanatory that takes any range and gives you the mathematical average of it so if I look at all of the revenues the average revenue is nine hundred and fifty dollars if instead I wanted to find out the number of units sold and what the average of that was you can see that it was 15.67 so you can use the average a function to pretty easily come up with an average of any range of data median is a bit trickier to explain that is the middlemost value in a range if I go into this median formula bar up top and I hit the insert function button it'll come up with a description here it shows you returns the median or the number in the middle of a set of given numbers but you can see it up here it shows the numbers that I have and since mine aren't sorted from smallest to largest or anything it'll really just be the average of the two in the middle if it's an even number if there were an odd number if I had seven entries it would be the middle entry but since I have six it's actually the average of these two so right now since they're both 15 it's 15 but if I change this to be 16 that would change to 15 and a half because it's the average of the two numbers in the middle of, a, of any given set. So make sure to sort that if you want to find that out in a, in a more statistical way. The sum function is extremely important. It's used all the time just to essentially add up numbers. You give it a range of numbers and it'll tell you the total of all of those numbers added together. So the sum of all of the gross profit is 3209 which you can see matches the total line that we have up above. Product is a pretty self-explanatory formula, just multiplies any numbers that you give it by themselves. So, for example, I'm giving it the units sold and the average retail price to come up with the revenue using this product function, and you can see it comes out to 5700 Sum product is an even more functional formula, in my opinion. You can use it to take large ranges and multiply specific cells by each other throughout the whole range. So for example, if I wanted all of the units sold multiplied by the retail price, I would use the sum product formula. I would put in the first for array 1, I would use an array as just a, a range or a set of numbers. The units sold, and for the second one I will use the retail price. It'll then go through, multiply each position in the array by itself, so 14 times 60 plus 20 times 50 and so on and it should give us the 5700 which matches some of all the revenue because it's multiplying all of the units sold by each of the retail prices and if you get really creative with the sum product formula it can get it can be extremely useful in saving you a lot of time the count function the count function gives you a number of cells not a value from the cells but it counts the number of cells in any area that contain a number so for instance I, I highlighted this area which includes the product category name and so you'll say that, see that that comes up as being 30 cells if I use the count a formula which counts the number of non blank cells same range as above you can see B106 to G111 it'll actually come up with six extra because count will give you how many have a number whereas count a will be non blank so that includes these product categories so it added these six cells as well but remember that's just the number of cells count blank does a bit of the opposite which counts how many blank cells we have in the range so if I deleted a number here you'll see that this goes up to one because I have a blank cell there and each of the other two decreased by one 
So you can use the uh, the count count a and count blank in many different ways. Usually in some intelligent uh, logical if statements to really get a lot of usage out of out of how you, figuring out how many items you're dealing with and a good way of dealing with them. Absolute value just takes whatever number you give it, positive or ne negative, and shows it as its positive um, absolute value. So you'll see I have uh, absolute zero, which is negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. If I take the absolute value of absolute zero, I get positive 273.15. So any number that is a negative would be converted to as its positive equivalent. Count if. Count if works on counting the number of cells as well, but it uses a logical statement to do that. Here, I've picked the range of uh, gross profit, and I want it to count the number of cells which are greater than or equal to 700. So which product uh, sales got us more than $700 worth of gross profit? And you'll see that comes up with two because there is a 714 and a 950. And remember, you have to put that in quotes, otherwise it will not work. Similarly, there's a count ifs formula, which allows you to give multiple criteria for which ones it should count. It's similar to count if, but it allows for additional criteria to be set as to which it's evaluated. So here I'm looking at the same area, gross profit. I want to see if they are greater than or equal to 550. So you'll see how it says criteria range 1 and the criteria 1. So gross profit needs to be greater than or equal to 550. Criteria range 2 will be my product category and then I'm having it equal to household. So it'll count this, how many cells within the gross profit are higher than or equal to 550 and our household, which you can see is one because although there are more that are higher than 550, only one of those is household. Sum if is similar, but instead of counting the number of cells, it will sum up or total the numbers that you give it based on a certain criteria. So here we'll use the sum if we pick the gross profit you put the criteria, remember to put it in quotes, so it is automotive. If if we have automotive as the product category, we would then want it to add up the numbers. That way you could give the total for the automotive sales. And then the sum range, if it's different from the first range, you enter, which would be the gross profit one. If instead I didn't want to use a secondary range, I could do, let's say, a sum if on the gross profit column and have it be greater than a certain amount and therefore it wouldn't actually need this additional range because it would be the same range that's why this has a bracket around it some of it can be extremely helpful so if you had three of these formulas one for each household automotive and outdoors you could very easily find out the totals for those without having to do much work some ifs is very similar to some if except you are allowed to put in multiple criteria this time it's a little bit different. The sum range always goes first, so whichever range you're adding is the first one, so the gross profit. Criteria range 1 is the first one you want evaluated, so I'm going to pick the product category and I want it to equal household. Criteria range 2, I'm going to pick the number of units sold and I want it to be greater than 15. And you can see here, you can add the third criteria, you can keep adding additional criteria, I'm not sure what the limit is and then that way it will only sum up anything that is household and have unit sales higher than 15 which we know is only that 550 gross profit again very useful depending on, on what you're trying to use it for a lot of these formulas are extremely useful in financial modeling or any type of modeling where you need to do a lot lots of math especially math related to specific labels average if works very similar to sum if you give it a range and it'll average it if a certain criteria is met. Here I'm averaging the gross profit if it's greater than 600. The random function will just give you a random number between uh, 0 and 1, but you'll see every time I hit random here it comes up as a different number. But it's only between 0 and 1, or you can consider it between 0 and 100 percent depending on how you're looking at it. If you want random in a certain range, you can use rand between and that you can give it a certain range and it'll give you a random number between those values so I did random between the earth's diameter and the earth's circumference and so every time you hit enter change a cell or recalculate it'll give you 
a new random between those. So if you're if you're using a random to come up with, let's say a random way of sorting things, make sure you copy and paste the values. Otherwise, the the randoms will keep getting updated every time something recalculates in the workbook. The round function is used to round numbers to either certain decimal points or a certain number of thousands. So for this instance, I'm using the Earth's circumference. If I wanted to round it to the nearest tenth of a decimal point, I would put a 1 here, which is, this is the number of digits. So a 0 would be to the nearest whole number. A 1 would be to the tenth. And then actually negative would bring you to tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. So if I did negative 1, for instance, it'll round it to the nearest 10, which is you know, 900. If I did negative 3 here, it'll show me 25,000 because I actually want it to the nearest 1,000. So using negative or positive, you can round numbers pretty easily. In addition to the round function, there's round down. Round down will simply round, do the same thing, but it'll round it down no matter what. If it's above the threshold that would consider it to round up, usually it'll round to the next one below. Round up does the same thing but reverse, so no matter what, it'll go to the higher level if it crosses the bottom threshold of whatever the, the rounding is to. So in this example, I have negative 4, and it rounds up to the nearest 10,000, which is 30,000, even though 24901 isn't above 25,000. And so using the round, round down, and round up, you can figure out which way you want to change your data to make it useful for you. The last formula that I'm going to go over is the subtotal formula. This one is a bit more complicated, and you see I, can, I posted a, a copy from the Microsoft Knowledge Base on it. You can see the link here. But essentially, the subtotal function has many different sub-functions that you need to choose. The format of it is subtotal, then you pick a function number, and then give it a range. So, for instance, right now I'm using the gross profit range and I'll use the 9 function, which you can see over here is the sum. The 9 one, it says, includes hidden values. So you'll see it comes up with 3209. If I went and right-clicked, hit hide, this still comes up with 3209. Using the 100 version of the function, so if I change this to 109 instead, you'll see it'll actually ignore the hidden values and so it won't include the one that I had hidden but mostly you'll be using the 1 through 11 version since hidden values aren't usually a problem the best part about subtotaling really so if I'll change it to uh, the 9 is that you can filter through different categories so let's say if I want to include automotive and household but not outdoors the subtotal here is 2014, which is the same as the subtotal I have above. But you'll notice that the sum we had earlier, which was H106 to H111, is still showing the total amount. So if you plan on filtering a list, you really should use subtotals because it will not include those items that have been filtered out of the list, depending on how you set up your, your subtotals and your sums. And that's about it. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Make sure to download the most recent version of the Excel Master Lesson Workbook to follow along at home.